Hello guys, Winston here. A couple years ago, before I had a CNC at my disposal or even knew what to do with YouTube, I came across a project that I thought was both nifty and useful. It was the conversion of a PC power supply to a benchtop unit that you could tap for common computer voltages. Since then, I've actually used it a couple times, mainly to power various LED contraptions for testing. Today, I'm going to revisit that power supply project with the CNC twist. This was actually inspired by a take on the benchtop power supply concept I saw in Make that didn't involve permanently altering a perfectly good PSU. They made an adapter for the motherboard power cable that would break out each of the desired voltages to binding posts. However, instead of trying to deal with the hassle of potentially having to desolder a motherboard connector, or purchasing a new connector as they suggested and having to solder leads to it, I spent an extra two or three dollars to buy a motherboard power extension cable. Not only are the necessary wire connections already made, but the cable I bought has clips that allow the female end to snap into a properly designed housing. I thought this would be a lot cleaner than glopping on adhesive to secure the connector to an enclosure. Starting with that snap fit interface, I designed a small box with features to securely mount a 24 pin connector, binding posts, and a toggle switch. For this project, I used Autodesk Inventor over SolidWorks just to keep myself flexible with CAD programs. Unfortunately, when I tried to export DXFs of my panels to convert to SVGs, Inkscape had a bit of a meltdown. Autodesk products have a habit of using polylines during export, which don't have the best compatibility with drawing and cam programs. I tried googling for a solution, but gave up after a couple minutes. It was just easier to export STLs of my panels and run them through MeshCam, even though I wouldn't be able to optimize the toolpaths like I would have in MakerCam. Having run out of MDF when I made my vacuum table, I purchased a new sheet of MDF for this project and cut it into square foot panels. With my stock materials replenished, I secured a square of MDF to my table and ran the program for the top and bottom panels. Upon inspection of the results, I noticed I wasn't cutting all the way through the MDF. MDF, despite being an engineered wood product, can actually have a pretty substantial variance in thickness. My old batch of MDF had been 6 millimeters thick. This new batch was over half a millimeter thicker, so my program depths of cut were all wrong. Lesson learned, never take any dimension for granted. After redoing my 3D model and toolpaths, I squeezed in all seven pieces in the remainder of my MDF square. I cut out the pieces and cleaned up the edges with a Dremel and some sandpaper. At first, I was going to glue everything together, but it turned out that my edge jointing tabs were a tight interference fit for their reciprocal cutouts. I could barely pull them apart by hand, so I figured I'd only use glue if I had any issues with the box down the road. I installed my binding posts, a toggle switch, and the motherboard connector. When I designed these panels, I'd put in a couple thousandths of an inch to my internal features and cutouts to account for backlash in the shape oko, and I ended up with a perfectly snug fit for all my parts. Next, I had to break out the various voltages from the motherboard connector. I first cut off the male connector on my extension cable before further pairing back my bundle of cables to the bare essential wires. These wires are ground, 3.3 volts, 5 volts, and 12 volts. These cables are all color coded and you only need one of each. All of the color coded wires are soldered to the power supply board in parallel so it doesn't matter which one you choose. Keep in mind that the colors on your extension cable may be completely nonsensical, so go by what you see on the power supply side. You also need to break out the green PSU enable wire. When you connect this wire to ground, it closes a circuit and activates the power supply. If you've ever seen a power supply tester, it's basically a female motherboard connector with a jumper between the power supply enable pin and ground. With just a little bit of soldering, my benchtop PSU adapter was complete. I plugged in the leftover power supply from my last PC upgrade and flipped the switch. I then tested each connector to verify that it was receiving the correct voltage. I'd added an LED inside the box to give an indication for whether or not my adapter was receiving power. In the event that your power supply turns off after a couple minutes, it's likely that it shut down after detecting no current being drawn. You can get around this by putting in a beefy 10 ohm 10 watt resistor directly between each voltage source and ground. If you need to do this, however, you may also want to install a small fan for cooling. I designed my enclosure to fit the unneeded fan for my Shapeoko 3 just in case. And that's all I have for this project. I'm hoping I might be able to use this power supply adapter for something like poor man's anodizing. But until then, I want to thank you all very much for watching, and I'll hopefully be back with a new project video and new NASA video later this month.